Earlier today, I finished reading uh, Sympathy by uh, Olivia Sujic. Uh, I'm sorry if I mispronounced her last name. It's a bit difficult to pronounce. Uh, it was an incredible book. Uh, I feel like this is a book that I'm very likely to reread at some point uh, because I was very interested because in uh, a lot of the themes that were in the book. Uh, it also had quite a lot of twists and was really well written so I feel like rereading it and seeing sort of how the plot was planned out throughout the book would be really interesting. Um, explaining the story of this book would be very very difficult um, just because like I said there are a lot of uh, sort of twists in it and the story doesn't necessarily start right at the beginning um, but essentially a uh, young woman moves to New York from Britain and stalks another young woman uh, named Mizoku through social media. Uh, and she contrives sort of this chance meeting with uh, Mizoku and inserts herself into her life. Uh, and it, obviously, based on this premise alone, uh, it's a pretty creepy book. Um, and there are a number of twists so from just like the plot point of view it's an incredible book um but one of one of the major themes in this book and that that i found really interesting that i don't see super duper often in books uh is sort of the way that social media affects relationships so throughout the book alice our main character feels like she knows mizoku because she has seen all of her social media posts and she's looked her up online and done all this research about her. Um, and she sort of learns everything she can about her before she goes to meet her and acts in sort of a way that she thinks Mizoku would want her to act based on her online presence. Uh, and she just says everything that Mizoku might want to hear. Uh, she sort of manipulates conversations so that she can bring up certain topics so she can act like they have the same opinion about something or that they have similarities in their lives. Um, she, but Mizoku, on the other hand, seems to really not know anything about Alice and honestly doesn't really seem to care to find anything out about her. She doesn't really seem interested in anybody else throughout the majority of the book. Um, and that's not to like feel too much sympathy for Alice's sort of weird manipulative behavior, but Mizoku is not really super interested in being friends with her. She keeps her around sort of for convenience and company when she feels like it. Um, and then other times sort of pushes her away. Um, and I sort of also feel like, again, not to excuse Alice's behavior in any way, um, but her obsessive behavior was certainly augmented by the fact that she could go online and look up all the, all of these things. I feel like maybe if she wasn't given the opportunity to sort of do all this research about somebody, she may have not acted the way that she did. Um, and because of sort of all this information she has about Mizoku, she's able to cater her own personality to match what she would imagine Mizoku would want to have. And she's able to insert herself into her life much easier than she would have been able to if she hadn't been able to find out all this information about her. Um, but because she doesn't act genuinely in any way, she's not able to form any sort of actual bond with Mizoku. Um, and all of their connection is like super superficial. Um, like it, it this is a connection that began through scrolling through somebody's Instagram feed. Well, that's not really how the connection began, but like that's how she sort of found all this information about her, is just by scrolling her Instagram. Um, a very sort of superficial application. So, of course, any sort of connection they're going to have is going to be very superficial. Um, anytime they start to get really close, Mizoku sort of pushes her away. Um, and they can't really connect because Alice is obsessed with Mizoku and doesn't really have a whole lot of personality, at least that she's showing to, to Mizoku. And Mizoku is sort of self-obsessed in a way, so she's not really interested in anything Alice has to say. She's off doing her own thing trying to get her boyfriend back. So they're not able to form any sort of friendship because of this. Uh, and sort of towards the end of the book, uh, Alice is unpacking some belongings of a relative who had passed away, and it says, 
Maybe this won't be an issue in the future, as there will be hardly any physical remains of a human lifetime. We'll just give our grandchildren our devices. Can you imagine trying to divide up all the things in them? For Carol, this attachment. Maybe, as Mizoku said, we won't even really die. Just carry on in the feedback loop we are stuck in. Instead of connecting with new things, uh, widening our worlds, algorithms have shrunk it into a narrow chamber with mirrored walls. And that, that's on page 400 of the book. Uh, I really liked this quote, especially the end. Uh, I wanted to talk about the first part. So, you know, despite the fact that obviously I'm currently on the internet talking about this, uh, I do prefer real physical objects and real physical, you know, interactions with people. Um, to use just sort of an example uh, in terms of like an object, I prefer actual physical books. Um, usually I use the library to take them out, but I do own like a fair amount of books because I like to have them and to see them physically in my space and to be able to look at them, to be able to share them. And I feel as if taking away all of our physical sort of things that we have and putting it all online sort of pulls these these sort of things especially when we're talking about like books or art or music or whatever it sort of strips away some of the humanity of it and like we're gonna probably see within the next few years that humanity sort of be completely stripped away as sort of ai artificial intelligence and all of that starts to take over our creative activities um it, it's sort of a sad thing at least to me because i enjoy that sort of connection with the real world um and i sort of feel like that same sort of disconnects exists with online relationships um mostly because when you connect with people online you have to kind of add to the person from yourself in order to make it like to, to interpret what they're saying because you can't see them you can't hear their inflections you don't really know anything about this person um so you sort of have to add from yourself to them and then doing so you're sort of not really connecting with this person necessarily but sort of a reflection of yourself um and the reality of this person being a different human being with their own life their own opinion their own flaws that may be different from the ones you imagine them to have might be difficult to handle and it might impede your ability to sort of relate to other people. And I found the fact that this book sort of explores that really, really uh, interesting. It's not something that I've seen personally explored a whole lot in a lot of uh, literature. So it was really nice to sort of see that. I really enjoyed this book and uh, that's pretty much it. Thanks.